This is the greatest depression ever. The biggest economic crash of our lifetime. This system is collapsing around us. There is no fixing it. No chance this could be fixed. It'll fall to the point of total officials' desperation. The bottom is when they admit they've lost and have nothing to do. The last time around, the banksters and other CEOs were in trouble because they were gambling with other people's money on Wall Street. They were losing very badly. The US government bailed most of them out, but they didn't learn a damn thing, and spent the bailout funds on bonuses for themselves and kept on gambling. That is partly why we are now headed for the greatest depression ever. America is also in debt up to its eyebrows, which certainly doesn't help. The end result is central bankers created the biggest, most egregious bubble in financial history. A $250 trillion debt bomb, with another $500 plus trillion in derivatives trading based on its yields. To put this into perspective, the tech bubble was about $15 trillion in size. The housing bubble, which triggered the 2008 crisis, was about $30 trillion in size. The bond bubble is over $250 trillion in size. Some $50 trillion of this is in sovereign debt, with the rest coming from corporate debt, mortgages, auto loans, credit cards, and the like. The $2.5 trillion stimulus money is only going to go to the gangsters, the bankers, just like last time. The bankers are laughing because they already stole tens of trillions post-2008 with all the politicians on top of the trillions they stole pre-2008. Tens of trillions hidden in offshore Cayman accounts. The money spent on keeping this propped while trillions are funneled to insiders so they can buy assets for pennies on the dollar, dwarfs what you will see in any stimulus. Interestingly, no politicians are objecting to the Wall Street $10 trillion bailout, but stamping their feet over every other element. And as we continue to shovel trillions at this turgid mass of puss-filled fraud, we are at once tossing away our chance at vitality on the way back up if there's going to be a way back up at all. Give a man a gun he will rob the bank. Give a man a bank he will rob the world. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too, on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you. As the government rushed to create financial panic with the virus catalyst, it will cause numerous unintended consequences, which will feed more fuel to the fire. As the Fed falters in its attempt to save the economy, it will be swallowed by the Treasury and become history while a new monetary system is born. The virus will then have accomplished one of its intended purposes. This is called Operation Control. They want to see how much of the population cowers in fear and believes the government. Meanwhile, the Americans are told to shut up set at home, quit your job, and close down all the gun doors while they are letting all the prisoners out. Who's most likely to get sick and die? The people outside in the fresh air and sunlight getting exercise or the people cooped up at home breathing recycled air and sitting on the couch watching endless mind-bending TV? This thing is here to stay. No two-week sporadic quarantines are going to stop it. Plus, the slower it spreads, the more it mutates before eventually infecting you with an even stronger version of itself. By that time, you'll be so out of shape from not going outside, a cold would probably kill you. Get healthy people. It's a war for the bankster world order, and they are using citizens as hostages with house imprisonment under false pretenses. COV-19 is the man-made designer planademic which will usher in the brave new world. It is the dark vessel that has already transferred trillions of dollars from the people to the corrupt banks and corporations. I don't buy the narrative that this is all about fighting a virus, and therefore we need to give up our freedoms of movement and assembly. Yes, there are some legitimate concerns, mostly exaggerated, prompting draconian measures. I also believe the threat of the virus is being used as a power grab. A permanent ever-expanding power grab over the American people. Just as the fear of climate change was, is an excuse by elites in and out of government to try and control us. The people behind this virus threat aren't going to willingly give you your freedoms back. The Fed to start buying stocks through ETFs. The capitalism has been dead for a while, but the Fed is now going to make sure it is dead by pumping lead into a corpse. Former Fed slackers Yellen and Bernanke are calling for the Fed to buy stocks and bonds, which is illegal. The Fed is monetizing everything else, including corporate junk bonds. The Fed has no more bullets, but hey, we knew that as the government has been buying up all the ammo. 
The US sociopaths in charge are using one credit card to pay down another, with all the progeny of their tax slaves holding the liability. The national debt clock shows tax revenues retreating across all levels. Government with one-third of the population now in financial survival mode, this will accelerate the longer at home quarantining continues. The only thing keeping the Ponzi alive at this point is more Ponzi. Good luck peeps. Time to end the Fed and seize their assets and gold and let them keep the debt. Start exchanging US Treasury notes for the Federal Reserve notes. This crash was coming no matter what. The stock market was ridiculously overvalued. By definition, debt is unserviceable. The money you need to cover the interests needs to be taken from the other loan. There is a solution here, and it involves people in the streets revolting at the notion of the Fed inflating its balance sheet to buy stocks. Short of that, nothing will change, and the party will go on. It is up to the people to end this supercycle of debt. The majority of government budgets come from taxing businesses. Businesses that are currently shut down. It is kind of hard to tax sales when there are no sales. The absolute decimation of business because of being locked down is far worse than losing two employees to cold for two weeks. Not only will the virus be good for taking away more of our civil liberties, but it's also a great excuse for austerity measures. Everyone will be bailed out with printed currency. Everyone will be paid. The problem, your check will buy a bag of peanuts. The only reason why the dollar doesn't become like the currency in Zimbabwe is that the US has the world staring down the barrel of its gun, without that fiat threat, there are probably as many grains of sand in the ocean as there are dollar bills in circulation. The least bad option is debt repudiation and a deflationary depression. That would be the honorable approach. Since our leaders do not have any honor, they'll go with the total destruction of the currency and a hyper-inflationary depression. Either way, a lot of people are going to see their standard of living destroyed. Now perhaps you people who are gullible enough to invest in a paper stock market with no tangible backing will understand the risks you take. Besides the stock market was really living in a different world from the rest of the economy. The economy never really recovered since 2008, and it been sluggish at best, with 93,000 businesses shutting down in 2019 alone. There were signs, all along, the economy was in the tank, and it took the virus to expose just how fragile it really was. Communist Chinese told us time and time again, they had a 100-year plan and were going to knock our block off. Yet even now, with everything basically shut down, the economy outside of food and medical grinding to a halt. People are sitting there hoping that their fake pre-virus lifestyle of complete BS can come back like with a flick of a switch. See how easy it was to use fear to control and manipulate the malleable mushed minds of the masses. Who would have ever believed that a hyped up fabricated story, in conjunction with your average flu epidemic, could have pulled off this global scam. This virus is a cover for the collapse of the US dollar. When we wake up from this, there will be Costco, Walmart, and a handful of other businesses open. All the owned private companies will be bankrupted. We will have to get our stuff from Amazon delivered. You will be unemployed and have a limited amount of time before you have to report to your free condo, where they will provide food and a task. All your private property will be taken from you, and you will be given a uniform to wear. Everything will be guaranteed for you, vaccines, food, and shelter. You will start feeling ill soon after, don't worry, you will have free health care to make you feel better until you die. Something had to be done. Soon. Something in which multiple stakeholders among ruling elites would benefit. That something was, is a financial reset. Offload toxic assets and stocks to Uncle Sam. Forgive debt in return for inflated asset prices. Borrow from Uncle Sam, speculate, keep the profits, and ask Uncle Sam to pay for the losses. The problem, of course, was contriving a sufficiently scary global crisis to pull off such a scam. Not much will be left to reopen at the end of April. Most restaurants, especially the mom and pops, are never going to reopen. One third road of this country will be unemployed. Savings will be wiped out. And people will be behind in rent and mortgages. It is time for the American patriots to rise up and march on Washington and take this country back. Anyone who doesn't think this corona beer virus was here by December or even November is dumb. We are connected to China with non-stop flights and huge amounts of Chinese Americans going back and forth all the time. This was here all winter but was just thought to be the flu. 
Yes, it's not pleasant to get sick and die, and we should do everything to help people at risk, but putting trillions of dollars on our kids' backs and shutting down everything is very stupid. Huge differences between now and 1929. For one, most of the home mortgages on residential real estate were seven-year term. A high percentage of these homes were paid off by the time the depression hit. Aside from farmers, ordinary people did not have any debt. People genuinely cared for one another and would often reach out to complete strangers in order to offer help. Compared to today, crime was virtually non-existent. Violent crime was so rare that when it did occur, it made headlines. Drug use was confined to a very small percentage of the population. Being a drug addict was considered to be the lowest of lows. The family unit was traditional and strong. Mothers did not work outside the home, and divorce was rare. Children feared their father and respected their mother. Schools still taught moral values and honored the history of our nation, including our founding fathers. Etc, etc, etc. Does everyone know why this crash isn't as painful as 1929? The answer, the welfare system. There was no welfare cushion to be exploited in 1929 by the Freebies Army who makes up over 40% of the population today in the US. Crash the welfare system and just see what happens. This is where the Second Amendment becomes very important. In 1929, a lot of people still had skills and knew how to be thrifty. Today, that's not the case. And supply chains are crazy long in comparison. We are the polar opposite of virtually every point listed above, and more, this is just a quick list that came to mind. With that being said, how do you think society will hold up when things really get out of control? This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, subscribe, and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you.